My name is Christopher Hill, and I am an MFA painter at Edinburgh University. Because of my research and working with abstraction, I think I would lean more towards an experimentalist philosophy. One of the major enduring ideas that I've been thinking about has been the individual, how they relate to society. I was looking at artists who were working with abstraction, someone like Kazmir Malvik or Elishitsky. Both of those guys were trained architects. They were working the turn of the century during the Bolshevik Revolution. They were trying to create social change through this work that they were producing. However, once the Bolsheviks gained power and became the new stable form of government. A lot of the artists and the, the people who really fought for the party were then persecuted because they no longer wanted revolutionaries. But the interesting thing is they're looking at this abstraction as idealist. They're no longer looking at a painting like looking through a window. They were looking at it as a composition purely in formal terms, almost as that was the ideal. It was, it was reduced to its essential state. And I thought that was very interesting because their subject had changed drastically. They're, they weren't showing people. They weren't showing, you know, like a, a futurist manifesto poster or whatever. They were using shape in a basic space as a pursuit to idealism. At the turn of the century, aerial photography was first being introduced. And we actually have records of Malvik going up in some of these planes and taking aerial shots of towns or cities. If you compare aerial photography to his geometrical abstraction, they look very similar. What Malvik was trying to do was create a, a sense of emotion and void. And I, I think he was really just trying to replicate the feeling of flight. And it's really interesting how that ties together, this first geometrical abstraction and that search for that feeling. I looked to those artists because they were approaching a composition, a two-dimensional composition and geometrical abstraction, but they were doing it in a way that was social activism and really said something about the search for utopia, the search for idealism. You know, that's something that's always stuck with me. I think the process of this piece really defines the value of the tighter areas. Without the contrast of that, I, I don't think that it would have the same effect on the viewer. I think that, you know, the process of this piece really emphasizes my philosophy of experimentalism because there is no set defined goal at the end. I don't know what this is going to look like beforehand. I'm very open to experimenting in application. I chose to showcase this project, this large painting that I'm working on for my thesis, because of its experimental nature and the way I developed the composition. I felt like that reflects my teaching philosophy. Um, I do think that there are defined rules that you should have for students, but I do also feel like there is quite a bit of exploration that the students need to find out on their own. I feel like they should be open to different types of media and experimenting to see what suits them. It's a bit intimidating to work this scale, which is why I, I, I have a mirror set up in the studio, because from standing at the painting, I can look back and I double the space between me and the painting itself. Even if the studio is not that big, I'm automatically getting twice the space between myself and the painting. And that can really help you quickly see what you're doing on the piece without having to step back too far. While working on something this scale, it's really important to keep in mind the uh, overall composition. There's no way that you could possibly look at detail on this scale. You have to look at the overall image. You have to look at the composition as a whole. One of the ways I'm able to get around this is by attaching brushes to dowels or poles. I'm painting with my entire arm and I'm standing back at least six feet from the painting, so I'm able to make decisions on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. But without having a defined source, there should be a lot of exploration, and there should be a lot of problem-solving. I think that reacting to a piece is, is probably one of the healthiest ways to paint. I take pictures of my work, and I look at it on a very small screen. You get a better sense of values. You can squint. You look at the composition, changing it in scale. You can see what's not working, what is working. You can flip it any way you want. Using the, the tools that you have available, I think it's, it's very important. And it's, and it's an easy way to you know, flip something if it's stapled to a wall and eight feet tall.